Okay, so what are we doing today? We've got the old Cava Cruiser here. Uh, it's no longer a camper. I took all the stuff out that made it a camper. Um, but this is my work car. This is what I drive back and forth to work usually because it gets like 40 miles to the gallon. Uh, old Green gets like 16. Buster gets high 11, maybe 12 if you drive him right. <laughs> the bus actually gets about 15 with, I guess, being a diesel. But, and my wife drives the Buick. So, that leaves the old Cava Cruiser. Uh, it's a pretty dependable little car. But, I'm having a small problem with it. Uh, it's not completely out yet, but the alternator is going out. I'll show you. Uh, for one thing, how to replace the alternator. Also, how to know when it is in the process of going out. Uh, it's not out yet, but it won't be very long at all. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace it. I may have the old one rebuilt for a spare sometime if I ever need it. But this is how you tell that it's going out. All right, well, it turns out it is really, really hard to see during the day and on camera. I can see it in real life, but you can't see it in the camera. It must be the frame rate or something. But the headlight is flickering on and off just a little bit. It's pulsating. Of course, you would not be able to see it. That's just, that's just what happens. Anyway, take my word for it. That light is pulsating. <laughs> okay, even though for some reason it does not show up on camera, this light, I'm thinking it's got to be the frame rate of the camera or something smoothing it out. But that light, both headlights, of course, and the dash lights, everything is pulsating on and off. It's like a... It's getting brighter and dimmer, brighter and dimmer, brighter and dimmer. And you, it, it's very, very obvious in real life, but you can't see it on the camera. Um, but anyway, if your vehicle starts doing that where it's pulsating, your alternator is going to go out. You may be able to get, it, it may last another six months, or it may go out tomorrow. The thing is, if it goes out and I'm on the way to work, then I've got to stop in the dark and change this alternator out beside the road probably somewhere and then hope I got enough battery power to start the engine back up. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change it. Like I said, this alternator will read that it's putting out full voltage. It is. It's putting out full voltage. But it is going out. It's in the process of going out. That is the sign when you start seeing that flicker. I wish it would show up on camera so I could show you, but if you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll look down at your dash, and it will be getting brighter and dimmer, brighter and dimmer. In the, it's just a pulse. Mm, I wish I could show you, but for some reason, the camera doesn't pick it up. Trust me, it is there. Now, we're going to replace that alternator. What do you need? I'll show you. Okay, what you need is for the Cavalier... Sunfire, probably a lot of GM cars. This has a 2.2 liter four cylinder in it, so it uses this type of alternator. As you can see, I have a replacement alternator. And the ears, it is important to make sure that the ears, which are the parts the bolt go through, the bolts go through, make sure those are the same. Also, make sure that the pulley is the same. And what you need. You need a 15 millimeter and a 13 millimeter and another 15. This 15 will be to get in to here. And this 15 will be what I'm going to use to release the tension on the belt. Because this has an automatic tensioner. Okay, also, I use, I mean, you can use a piece of tie wire or anything. I use a bungee cord. But I'll show you what that is all about okay first thing you need to do very first step for safety pull your terminal off of your battery positive negative it doesn't matter some people like to pull the negative off it doesn't matter as long as this battery is isolated it cannot 
have anything put through the system, okay? Now, first thing, let's put this on the tripod. Okay, first thing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the wires off of this. Of course, this plug, you just pop it out. Got this little thing here, you just put your thumb under it, lift it up a little, pops right out. This one, 13 millimeter. And that is your hot. I'm going to put that back on because I may have this rebuilt. Okay, next, you're going to want to relieve the pressure on the belt. Okay, the belt tensioner is this pulley right down here, okay? What it has, it has a spring in there. It's like it's mounted so it can swivel like this. And when it swivels, it takes up the slack of the belt. And it maintains a constant tension on it. So, the way to get this one loose, a lot of them are different. A lot of them use the actual end of the socket. You put the end of the socket in and pull it and it, and it loosens. This one, you just put a socket on the nut right there. Or a wrench. That's what I'm going to use. So, let's do that. Now, I'm just going to use my 15 millimeter wrench. So, We'll push this down. That loosens the belt enough that you can pull it off of the alternator, okay? When you release it, it lets the tension back in. But so you don't want to turn this loose so that it ends up going and falling down in the engine compartment. Then you gotta fish it all out. So I think a bungee cord, hook it around something. I guess the wipers, anything. And hook it up like that. That way it holds the belt up. It's on all of your pulleys. You don't have to go through and re-thread it or nothing like that. Now, the alternator. This is a 13. I guess you can see, uh, I guess you can see that. Yeah, 13 millimeter. Well, it's always recommended to do this in the rain, too. That ensures that you'll get sick. No, I've got a rain out day, so I'm going to take this uh, opportunity to put this alternator on because I've been driving Buster to work, and he's eating me alive in gas, so we're going to fix the old cavity. creek. All right, that's the half inch or the 13 millimeter. Next, you have the, uh, yeah, that way. Next, you have the 15 millimeter. Yep, raindrops on everything. There's a reason why I'm rained out today, I guess. And that is loosening. Some alternators actually have a nut on the other side. This one does not. It's actually made into the bracket. And there is the old alternator. This ear right here goes in here. Same exact way the other one was. Relatively easy and quick job to do. Would not be quite as easy and quick if you're on the side of the road having to do it. That's why I'm doing this preventative maintenance instead of repairing something that's already went wrong. Okay. Then, same as we did before, 
take the tension off of it. Let me get my belt ready. You can hold it up here where it's close. And there you go. Good and tight battery. Plug it back in. Put your battery terminal back on. Okay, not that you can tell any difference on camera. It looks exactly the same as it did a while ago. But the lights are staying steady. And... The voltage is good. 13.5 is good voltage. Everything looks like it's moving like it should. The belt's all smooth. Yeah. Okay, so now we have the off meter replaced. Head lights are good and bright. I know I'm not going to break down beside the road anywhere. It should be good. Now, I'm kind of wanting to get out of the rain because it's uh, it's not a soaking rain. I mean, I'm not really wet, but it's a constant little drizzle. And I would rather not be out in a constant drizzle. So, I appreciate you all watching. And I will see y'all on the next one.